So the, the word of the Lord, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. Keep going. Find 21 for me too when you guys get done, okay? I'll just go back to it. But if your ears are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If your eyes are unhealthy, excuse me, then your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be, you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Let's say that together. You cannot serve both God and money. Let's say it again. You cannot serve both God and money. Again for the Holy Spirit. You cannot serve both God and money. Verse 25. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to stick with the prophetic unctioning for tonight. Never broke again. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you think that came from NBA young boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that came from the Bible. Yes. That came from the what? The Bible. He, he will lead you beside still yeah. waters. Okay. Yeah. All right. That, that's provision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to prophesy over the people tonight, never broke again. Hallelujah. I want to prophesy it over your life. And when I say never broke again, what I'm really prophesying, and this is going to be a prophetic message, is no more late fees. No more foreclosures. I just want to prophesy. Come on. No more being in the red. I know, you, I know you're going to act like you got it all together tonight.
The enemy does not want us to be free in the area of money and free in the area of marriage. Yeah. Yeah. So anytime we address these topics, it can be a bit taboo. It can be hard to receive because oftentimes when we talk about money, the spirit of shame comes upon the people. And we start thinking about how big of a hole we're in. We start thinking about the only people that we know that got money are the people that are untouchable like the rappers and the CEOs and the people who own these grand companies. We, we believe that being able to be stable and provided for is unreachable. And so God began to speak to me and he began to show me that we have to understand that money can, your money can have a curse on it. Just like you can be living under a curse in your body, your money can be cursed. Just like you can be living under a curse in your ministry, a ministry can be cursed. And we talk often about breaking those generational curses, but sometimes the curse that comes upon us as it relates to our money is generational, but it's also uh, we are accountable for the things that we have not done ourselves. Somebody say amen. amen. So you have to understand how a curse operates. You can look at your surroundings and see if you are living under a curse. A curse comes by way of the mouth. You can speak a curse over your money. A curse comes by way of those who were before you. If those who were before you sacrifice your wealth on an altar for something that they wanted at a certain time frame, it could curse your life. If those before you made bad decisions with money and they began to use your social security number to get telephones and they got you in debt before you were even an adult, you're already living under a curse. Wow. But Jesus is the curse breaker. Yeah, yeah. And Jesus breaks curse through power and he breaks curses through knowledge. Yeah. See, we only want the, the curse breaker that gives us power. So this is why it's easy for me to come to the altar and expect prophetess or apostle or the leaders to lay hands on me because I believe in the supernatural power of God breaking curses. But how many of us know that God breaks curses through wisdom? You have power, but he's also giving you wisdom. He's giving you intellect. He's giving you knowledge. And he's giving you understanding. Yeah. Wisdom is difficult because God will place people in your life that have more than you, that look better than you, that's sharper than you, that's in a different tax bracket. He will place those people in your life not to make you feel intimidated. But anytime God wants to give you something, he will first expose it to you through somebody else. But the enemy says that when I get around somebody that don't got what I got and don't look like I look and don't talk like I talk and don't ride like I ride, the enemy says be jealous of them. The enemy says hate on them. The enemy says hey, they think they all that. I hear the Holy Ghost tonight. But when God wants to promote you, he will first expose you to what he wants to give you. And if you're going to be able to receive what you see, somebody else has If it's given to me, I'm a slave to it. 
So the United States is the poorest. Yeah. We are thirty trillion dollars in debt. Yep. We have been taught to buy what we don't have. We have been taught about how to put something on credit and not how to raise your credit. So that's curse number one. Peaches. Curse number two, you live in Mississippi. It is the poorest state. We are the last in education. We are the last in economics. We have the highest AIDS rate. Y'all don't want to have a child. We have the highest of black men out of the household. Y'all ain't talking. We have the highest as it relates to teenage pregnancy. That's curse number two. You already happened. Curse number three, if you live in the Mississippi Delta, the Delta is the bottom of the bottom of the barrel. Oh my God. The Delta outweighs every other county in Mississippi in diseases, mm. poverty, lack, yeah. and death. My Lord. That's curse number three. Wow. And depending on what your mother and father did with their finances, that's curse number four. But Jesus. Yes. I'm going to say it like this. But God. Is the curse breaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of you in this room ought to give God praise. Because you ain't where you want to be in your finances. But to be living under all of those curses. That ought to wake something up in you. Man, I'm in the Mississippi Delta. I live in the poorest county. I live in the poorest state. I live in the poorest nation. But some kind of way, I'm still above water. Come on. You ought to be ready to go the extra mile. You ought to be ready to break this thing all the way. Some of you got your foot on the neck of poverty. But you need to break the neck of poverty. Somebody tell them about to go all the way. When David got ready to kill the lion, he hit him with the stone. And he knocked them out. This is my favorite part. It's not a physical condition, it is a mindset. Wow. It's how you think. It's how you see things. It is how you reason. Some of you, the Lord says this year, I'm going to teach you how to deal with your reasonings. Some of us, we know what's right. We know what's God. We know what's real. We know what's out of order, but I reason, I allow the enemy to get me into an argument with the doctrine of God. I allow the enemy to get me in a back and forth. You start making justifications for why you're buying things that you don't need. You, you start making justifications. I'm already in a deep enough hole. And, 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 and since I'm already in a deep enough hole, I might as well keep digging. Am I talking to anybody in this house tonight? You got to understand that poverty is not a physical condition. It's not a physical location. It is a mindset. And if you ever want to be something in this life, in the kingdom of God, you got to learn how to have your own mind. Everybody else around you can think a certain way. Everybody else around you can reason a certain way. Everybody else around you can talk a certain way. But how are you talking? How are you reasoning? How are some of you need to get your own mind and your money will get better. Some of you need to get your own reasoning that's lined up with the 
for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Your treasure is your money. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, that's my money. That's my money. All right? And then the scripture goes, because when you read the Bible, you got to read it in context. Go to 22. It says the eye is the lamp of the body. Now, we were just talking about money, and now here Jesus is talking about the eye. Because if you got a money problem, you got an eye problem. Y'all oh, oh, ain't coming here, church. Y'all faking in this house. Y'all did not come to have church. The Bible says where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Wow. Then it goes to the very next verse and said, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be healthy. Yeah. Next verse. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. Because God is dealing with what we like to look at. Oh yeah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you got a money problem, you got an eye problem. Yeah. See, see, some of us are saying, I don't have enough. You got enough, you got an eye problem. All right. It's not that you don't have enough, it's just you keep seeing stuff that you want to buy. It's not that you don't have enough. The enemy has trained you that you cannot ride by the coffee shop without getting coffee. The enemy has trained them. Have you ever just been having a conversation with somebody and then the next thing you know that thing pop up in your ad on Facebook? You ever been talking about a pair of shoes and that thing? Because you know your phone tapped on it, but I ain't going to go down that road. before I had a baby. Yeah. Oh. I ain't seen nothing but Grizz tickets in my ass since the day I told the minute about it. And I texted it to him. Oh. So what they have done, what the enemy does, this is why he's called a stumbling block. Because you're well on your way to a greater in God. You're well on your way to financial freedom, but then he puts something in your sight. Something that I don't need. Something that doesn't make sense for me to buy right now. Something that does not that, that does not bring value to my walk with God. And he makes what we see a stumbling block. Anybody in this house say, I'm, I'm going to be like Ray Charles in this season. I don't see that we ain't got on to have church. What time? 
I see. I got to learn how to tell my eyes no. Because I'm going to tell you something that I learned when God dealt with me about my finances. I used to struggle with greed. Because when you grow up in poverty, you learn to be greedy. You figure out how to get. It's like when with children, the children who don't have enough food. As an educator, I always knew the children who weren't eating at home. Because they would be the kids at the table just eating, 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 asking other people, you want your food? You want your I know that they're not eating at home. I know what it's like to grow up and not have all the things that you see everybody else have or not be able to experience certain things. I know what that's like. And so it built up a spirit in me that I wanted to have more without the boundaries of God. But God spoke to me one day. He said, daughter, your wealth is your witness. How you deal with money shows me how you live for me. Wow. Wow. That's so good. Yeah, that's good. So sometimes it's not about being a millionaire. That's it. It's just understanding that the way you deal with money is a witness God cares about. It. Yeah. And you got to handle your money in a holy way. Ooh. A lot of the addiction that we have is an eye problem. An eye problem leads to a money problem. That's good. Teach it. A money problem leads to a heart problem. Mm. This is why before you give your heart to somebody, you need to know the condition of theirs. Yes. If the Bible says that wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is, you don't need to marry somebody and be dating somebody that ain't got the right view of money. Come on. Because if, believe it or not, adultery is not the main reason, the first reason that people get divorced. But the number one reason that people get divorced is because of financial issues. And I know we don't want to hear this, but you need to marry a man that know how to say we ain't got it right now. You need to know how to be with a man that can tell you don't need that right now. I'm about to get in trouble. You need to be with somebody that got the right view of money. Because if he got the right view of money, he got the right view of God. And he will never leave God for money. And he will never leave you for something that God told him to have, didn't tell him to have. You got to understand that money is a direct correlation with God. It said, who cannot serve two masters, God or money? Money leads to marital issues. Money does. And you might say, well, I, I, I don't, we don't fight over money. But, you, but you're so depressed. Mm. <laughs> this is good. After you get through paying bills, you so mad. Oh, oh, Wife ain't did now. You just mad today. Cause you looking at how I'm working and and, I, and I'm and I'm, I'm I'm doing all of this and and, and and now we paid our bills but we ain't got no money. That's it. That's it. I know. I know. I know. I know what it's like. When things get rough, when things get tough, when things get hard financially, we're not the same believers. And if you're going to be able for God to trust you with more, you got to be able to serve him when you got little. You got to be able to praise him when you don't have what you want to have. Because money problems lead to heart problems. It leads to jealousy. You know what else it leads to? It leads to dishonesty. Hello? Because sometimes just what you see, but, but money will have you worried about how you see. Uh -huh. oh, wow. So it teaches you to buy what you don't have so you can be seen a certain way. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Yeah. It teaches you to keep up. Yeah. It, it teaches you that your value is in your external appearances. That's why if we add up the amount of shoes and all of these things that we have, which is nothing wrong with those things if we can afford them. Right. It's nothing wrong with those things if we are out of debt. Yeah. It's nothing wrong with those things if we are paying our tithes and faithful to the Lord. Yeah. It's nothing wrong with those things. But the enemy will teach you to focus on your external appearance so nobody knows that you got money problems. Right. Yeah. 
He will also make you so attached to the worship of material things that you don't feel good unless you buy something new. Wow. Come on. Wow. Yes. Help. Wow. Talk about Come on, help me tonight. Yeah. Help me set you free through the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Am I the only one that ever been there? No. 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 That you find comfort in the worship of material things because I need to buy me something new. Yeah. And as believers, we sometimes struggle with this because I'm not drinking no more. Yeah. I'm not smoking no more. I'm not clubbing no more. Yeah. So because I'm not doing some of those things, the enemy will tell me, get rid of one addiction and create another one. Wow. Wow. So I will find comfort just putting multiple items in the basket. I find comfort in getting a new outfit and I don't need one. I will find comfort in buying this or, or going here or doing this because this is the worship of material things. And it will always be an enemy to you being able to come into the house of God and feel the weights lifted because the weights aren't lifted when you lift your hands. The weights are lifted when you swipe your car. Yeah. So he said you cannot serve two masters. Yeah. There are so many of us that think that God is saying Tithe because the church needs money. Tithe because the church needs money. Now, if I give it to you in layman terms, I will tell you this. Whatever I'm a part of, every other organization of the earth, if you are a part of it, yes, come on, help it. <laughs> Yep, it. Sometimes you got my back because I'm about to go there. <laughs> Every other organization on earth, yep, and your chip, when they join the football team, isn't there something they have to pay Coach Buford? Yeah. Is there ever a problem? No, because they want to see their baby show out. Yeah. Is it ever a problem for them to travel down the road and buy concessions and, and follow the team wherever the team go? But, but we listen to the world that got an issue with you following your path. Sermon, but ain't nobody got nothing to say about the parents who going to look at their children play football. Y'all didn't come to have church. 
don't find it. It breaks the curse that you fight against every day. Yes. How many weeks in the last 52 weeks you miss getting your hair cut? Come on, prophet. Come on, prophet. Come on, prophet. Come on now. Because, because the Lord said, he said, tell the people, I'm getting out of here. He said, tell because you know why I can teach on it like this? Because it used to be my problem. You know why I can talk like this? I know all about it. I know all about walking into a room, worried about every. I know about looking at people's cars and speculating that they might have so much more than me and feeling so low and feeling like I would never own a house feeling like I would never pay out my debt I know what it's like to have medical bills stacked up and stacked up and stacked up I know what it's like to come in what other people have but I'm telling you about the power of the Holy Ghost if you will give God what he is doing if you will give God trust in the area of your finances you will see him break the back Tell the people tithe faithfully. Yes. Faithfully. When you go to the barber shop, that's a faithful every week thing. Nobody got to tell you. Come on. We were we were risking COVID to go get our get a hairline. Scared to go to church, but you gonna get that hairline. Faithfully. And guess what? You never question, Frederica, what your barber do with the money that you pay him. Oh, when the last time you asked Beyonce and what he doing with the money you give him with the white lines that he be putting on your head that have you looking so good? You don't care what your barber ride me.
are living this lifestyle of holiness, what's the first thing that God gives you, man of God? He gives you boundaries. Mm -hmm. So why is it that I have boundaries? There's just certain things I can't do. Yeah. There, there's just certain things I can't go by because I want to maintain my deliverance. Yeah. Why don't we have boundaries with our money? Yes, oh, yeah. So you got to ask the Lord, Lord, give me boundaries with my money. Yeah. And you know what not having boundaries with our money, do you know where it came from? Mm -hmm. It came from a lack of just knowing. I, I thought about this today as God began to, well, I thought about this weeks and weeks and weeks ago, probably months ago, that God told me, you got to start, Layla is nine, you got to start teaching her about money. Yeah. This is when she was eight. And so what I do with Layla is I stop this habit of daddy and myself or whoever, grandma, granddad, nanny, gives you some money and you just go spend all of it. Oh. Yes. Yes. I stop that yeah. because I realize it's my responsibility to give her her foundation yeah. for finance. Yeah. Yeah. So what I tell is, Layla, when you get your money, if it's anything over five dollars, you got to take ten percent of that and you got to give it to the Lord. Yes. You got to take the ninety percent and you got to divide it into seventy twenty. Seventy percent go in your savings account and you can go do whatever. You can be reckless with the twenty yeah. percent. So now every time Layla gets some money, if you know anything about Layla, Layla gonna get some money. Yeah. <laughs> Mama, can I clean your room for twenty dollars? Yeah. <laughs> she gonna get some money. I love it. Okay? So every time Layla gets some money, at nine years old, she say, Mama, can you help me divide my money? Yeah. So, so this means when she turns twenty-one, she ain't gonna be calling me because she behind. understand that breaking the curse of poverty is something that some of you will teach some of you will help others with some of you teach your children some of you are going to experience it yourself you got to be diligent about breaking the curse of poverty you got to be diligent about seeing overflow you got to be diligent about making sacrifices now so that you can be in a better position later I wrote in my Cadillac with a dent on the side for two or three years. And there were times I'd be shamed, riding up in certain places. I would be shamed to come to the church because I'm the pastor's wife and I'm in this little old 2007 Cadillac with a dent in the side. But it wasn't my time. Right. I had to sacrifice. I had to sacrifice so that I didn't have to get into illegal things or, yeah. or, 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 it, or a lack of integrity to get more yeah. or something that I, I, could, I could get that greediness out of me that, yeah. that says that, that I was nothing because I didn't have what somebody else had. Yeah. And one of the things that God taught us in our seasons of struggling financially, because we, had to, we, we struggled for years, it made our marriage stronger because we had we, we didn't have anything but each other. Yes. Yeah. And so we learned that, that date night didn't have to be at a fancy restaurant. We learned how to do it at the house. Yeah. We learned to be content with a little so that when we got a lot, it didn't blow our head. Yeah. So sometimes your, 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 your season of not having what you want to have is, is a training ground. Yeah. Yeah. So that you're ready when God, because he's going to do it. Yeah. He's going to do it. He's going yeah. to come through. Oh, yeah. oh, I prophesy in this house that he's going to come through. We're going to see many miracles as it relates to our money in 2023. Yeah. He's going to come through, but he first teaches us contentment. Yeah. He teaches us 
contentment. As a husband, he taught apostle how to provide without depending on anybody. He taught him how to be a husband that had to work and work and work and depend on the Lord. So he learned that when he got in a, a financial struggle, it, it didn't run him to the streets. It, it didn't run him to places that, that would get him in a deeper hole and get his family in a deeper hole. But it taught him how to get on his knees. There were many days I heard my husband crying out to God because we just didn't have it. And then he would leave from being on his knees praying to God. And he would go pick up cans and he would sell whatever he had to sell to make sure that we had it in our household. Yeah. Mm. Yes, Lord. So God will teach you contentment, yes. like Paul said. Yes. As God teaches you contentment, then he also teaches you through wisdom and principle yeah. how to put this down. Yeah. How to glorify him in this way. How to honor him in this way. Amen. Because God's desire is for your money to multiply and not dry up. Yeah. Yes, Lord. And so I speak to your heart tonight you, that the spirit of shame, that's the first spirit we're going to deal with. It's not going to govern you any longer. Yes, Lord. That you're not going to be ashamed, number one, of whatever financial mistakes you've made in the past. Yes. One of my greatest financial mistakes was my first car that I didn't have a co-signer on out the lot. Had no idea what the interest rate meant. And both of those cars, we paid for probably two or three times. Biggest mistake. Needed a new car, it was breaking down. Went to try to go get a new car, it was upside down like $9,000. So I had to depend on the Lord. I had to ride it out until I could pay it off. Yes. And then I would cry out to God because I, I didn't have this and I didn't have that. He said, you did have it. You thought it was extra money. You know, spend a bag, make a bag. And so because you weren't taking what you call extra money, there's no such thing as extra money. He said, because you were taking what you thought was extra money. I was giving, I was providing for you to pay that debt off. Wow. Yeah. So what, what I was doing is I was taking what I thought was extra money. Because I, I didn't, I, I had, a, I worship on material things. And God was providing for me to get out of the hole. Yeah. And once I decided I was going to make the sacrifice, I started doing, I started seeing him do the supernatural. Wow. I started watching debt collectors tell me, I would, I, it got to the point I was telling them what I was going to give them. Yes. And they would say, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> Send me my letter. Yeah. Because when you sacrifice, you will see the supernatural work in your life. But somebody said, I kind of start making a sacrifice. I, I, I kind of start making a sacrifice. I done got to do it. I, but if I won't pair, I, I kind of make a sacrifice. God still going to love you if you choose to eat out every night. God still, you still welcome in the house of God if you don't tie. That's between you and God. Yeah. He's still going to love you. Yeah. But if you want to see the supernatural work in your life, you've got to learn about sacrifice. Yeah. Every great man and woman of God in scripture had to make a sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says that, that Abraham was asked of God to take his only son up the mountain and sacrifice him. You know what's so amazing about God? He ain't even asking us to do stuff like that. Yeah. The sacrifices that he's asking us to make are minor. That's right. They're minor. So what sacrifices do you hear God asking you to make tonight? Some of you, this is completely tied to your spiritual journey. What sacrifices are you hearing God you got to make? Marriage 
requires sacrifice. Somebody got to be the first to say they sorry. Yeah. Friendship, it requires sacrifice. Somebody got to be the first to call and say we shouldn't be acting like this. Ministry requires sacrifice. Somebody got to be the one that say we got to work together. We got to be on one accord. Yeah. Forgiveness requires sacrifice. If you start looking through your life, are you a sacrificial person? Forgiveness requires sacrifice. It requires me to be the bigger person. It requires me to leave my money at the altar, leave my gift at the altar, and go make amends with the person that I got issues with. So some of you, it ain't money, but there are other sacrifices that the Lord is asking you to make. Yeah. So we believe God tonight. And as we are making spiritual transitions, he's bringing forth supernatural transaction. As you're transitioning in your walk with God, there are supernatural transactions taking place.